Welcome to another video with Mr. Long and we are looking at how we can display data in a grid and this is the second part of our series on nested loops so hopefully this will help you. You'll go watch our previous video on how to do nested loops and now we can look at how we can use a grid format whenever we want to display our information. So when displaying in a grid, this is the steps that I would recommend that we use. We're going to use an S line variable, some sort of string variable, which is going to represent one line in our grid or one row. And so we need to initialize that to, for example, nothing. So maybe your row has a beginning start. You can initialize that. But most of the times you'll probably initialize it to the null string or to the empty string. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that S line variable and change it inside of a loop, inside of an inner loop. We can take that S line variable and we're going to give it so take whatever's currently in S line and add on the new value. So take whatever's in S line, add the new value. And because we want some sort of grid format, we're going to create a tab at the end of it so that it creates. So when the next time we add on to S line, it's going to have a little bit of a gap before it adds the new value for the next time we do this loop. Sometimes you might put that hash nine in front, depending on the situation, but you're going to have some sort of hash nine to create that tab effect of a grid. And then once that inner loop is completed and it's completed that whole S line, S line's added on the different values with the different tabs, we're then going to display S line after the inner loop is completed. And that's going to just basically complete one row of our grid. So it's going to create one row, keep adding on to creating the divisions by hash nines, and then display that one line. See, that does only one line of a grid. A grid can contains multiple rows. So we're going to take all of that code and place it inside of an outer loop to repeat it however many rows we want in our grid. Just remember that initialization or that starting value of S line should happen right there inside of the outer loop. So that when it does the new line for the new row, that it resets it to nothing. We don't want to have a new line and it contains everything from the previous line plus more. So that's what we're going to do when we display data in a grid format. So let's go try some examples of this. So you have got a program where we've got a button, for example, one and a nice little rich edit that we can display in. And so let's double click on this and see what we want to do. We want to display consecutive numbers in five rows of seven columns. So basically you want like a one, two, three, four, five. That's five rows of seven columns. So six, seven. And then the next one should be an, an eight, nine, 10 and so on. So we want to create that type of it. five rows of seven columns. So we want to do something like that. So let's take the steps that we learned in our previous video about nested loops. We must first get one row working. That's what I would recommend. So I've got an S line variable and I've got a loop variable which I use for the columns. So I'm going to go, okay, so let's initialize S line to nothing. So that's my string variable and I'm going to loop. So we want seven columns. We want seven values. So I want to make our call go from one to seven. So I'm going to do that. And so what am I going to do? I'm going to take that one and add it onto S line. And then I'm going to add a little bit of a gap. So like a hash line. And I'm going to take the two and add it on. So inside this loop, what am I actually going to do? I'm going to take S line and make it equal to whatever's currently in S line. And we're going to add our call because our call is going to be a one and then a two and then a three. And then at the end, I'm going to add that hash nine. Okay, but remember our call is an integer, so it's converted from an int to a string so that it can fit all together into S line. So there we go. So it's going to take that one, add it onto S line, and then a gap. And then take that two, add it onto S line, then add a gap. And, so on. and then once we are finished, we're going to say rich edit, the rich edit control dot lines dot add, and we are going to add S line to that. Now that's a string, so it should work fine. So let's have a look, see what it looks like. So there we go. Let's take it. Let's display. And there we can see our one to seven. That's fantastic. Now we want to do that. So that's our inner loop. So now we want to do that for five rows. So we want to repeat this whole process five times. So I'm going to make another variable called our row. And I'm going to go all of this that we've just done. All of this, this over here. Boom, boom, boom. All of this must be repeated five times. So I'm going to go for our row is a one to five. So that's the other step. We first work with the columns and then we repeat that process for the amount of rows. So we're going to put a begin and end around all of this. So this is the end of the outer R row loop. And this over there is the end of the inner R call loop, just so that we know for clear. And I'm going to indent this just a little bit so that we can get some, making sure that it's nice and formatted correctly so that we can clearly see the code a lot clearer. There we go. So that's great. So let's try to see what that does. So we did one line and we put it inside of an outer loop. So we've done step two of our 
nested loop strategy. So let's go display it. Boom. And there we go. So we've got, we definitely got five rows of seven columns. We definitely got a grid format, except for we don't want it to go one to seven every single time. When it gets to here, we actually want it to go eight, nine, ten, and so on. So I'm not actually wanting to display this variable. I want something that's going to go from one to seven, but then it's going to continue to eight and nine and and so on. What I'm going to do is I've got this R num over here. So I've got R num over here. I'm going to do the following. I'm going to initialize R num. I'm going to initialize R num to a zero. This is the part where we are modifying the code so that they work together. I'm going to take an R num and make it a zero. Now every time I add on a value onto each row, I'm actually going to use R num instead, not R call. I'm going to add on R num. I'm actually going to increase R num over here. So look here, increase R num. So we know R num starts off as a zero. Okay. For row one, we're going to go, okay, R num now becomes a one. Add on the one, add on the two, add on the three, add on the four, add on the five, add on the six, add on the seven. So that's the complete of that loop display it. Now it does the second row. Now R num, because it was initialized outside of the outer loop, it still contains its value of seven. So when it comes here for the second run of this code, when it does this loop the second time, our number will still be a seven, so it increases it to eight and displays eight, nine, ten, and so on. So by just using that variable rather, it shouldn't use the one to seven every single time. It should use a value that's going one to seven and then an eight and a nine and so on. Let's try that out. So there we go. Let's run it. Ah, there we go. One to seven, then eight to 14, 15 to 21, and so on. So there we go. So there we saw the basic idea of trying to display values into a grid. First did one line of our, our grid, one row, get it working perfectly, put it inside of a loop for how many rows we want. And then we just modified it by instead of using the looping variables, we just had our own variable, which is changing from row to row. So that's what we did over there. So I'm going to do another example where I'm going to take random numbers from 1 to 10 and I'm going to take, so let's take a 4 and then we're going to take a 5 and then I take a 7. And what I want to do is I want to keep doing this until the numbers, the, the sum of all these numbers is greater than or equal to 21. Okay, so if that's 9 plus 7, another random number, let's give a 6. There we go. So I think that is greater that's 9 16 that equals to 22 so we're above 21 so we stop so that's basically what i want to do just create randomly generate numbers until the sum is above 21 so i've got a sum variable and so let's go i'm going to do this i'm going to say our sum is equal to zero and what we're going to do is we're going to loop or this is going to be a while loop while our sum is less than 21 because we want to keep doing this while our sum we're going to say create a random number so our num let's create this random number our num is going to be a random range number from one until nine so we're going to go from one to ten because remember it's one before ten with a random range remember for this you must use users math at the top remember to do that at the top i've already done that for us we're going to generate a random number and we say our sum is equal to our sum plus whatever this our num variable is okay that's great and so we want to display it so i've got this s line so i'm going to make s line over here s line is equal to nothing and we're going to go okay s line is equal to whatever is in s line and we're going to add this r num and then we're going to add a little bit of a gap but remember r num is a number so we just convert from an int to a string and what I want to do is once it's got the, the numbers, like it had four, seven, six, nine, if it did something like that, so that would be 26. I want to actually at the end, once it's done, go equal 26 so I can see what the total of those numbers are. I think that is 26, yeah. What I'm going to do is once that loop is done and it's added all the numbers and we've got above 21, then over here, I first want to say S, I'm going to display. So in the rich, rich edit, rich data dot lines dot add, we're going to display S line, but we're also going to add on an equal to sign followed by whatever our sum is so we can see what that total is which is an integer so convert from an integer to a string so let's just see what that looks like so we basically generate random numbers add them together until the number gets above 21 so let's have a look at what that looks like boom we're doing example two, so let's click on it, boom, and there we can see 9 plus 1 is 10, plus 8, plus 6, that's it. And if I click on it again, it'll do another different generation of numbers, and it'll keep, you see each time is a different, and it's nicely spaced out. We can see all the numbers, and we see a nice little equal to at the total at the end. So that's great. So now I want to repeatedly do this again and again and again until one of our calculations equals to 21 exactly oh so that's easy so we're going to do all of this inside of a loop so i'm going to so we don't know how many times it's going to happen so i'm going to use another while loop i'm going to put all of this inside of a loop while do so we're going to put a begin here and we're going to do all of this code again all of it again 
including the display. Do all of this code again. So let's bump it up a little bit so we can see the difference between the outer loop and the inner loop. So there we see all our lovely code. And so this is our inner loop, end of while inner, and this is the end of our while outer. Okay, so there we can see the difference between the two. I'm actually going to put a little, just so that we can see it a bit clearer. I'm just going to do that so we can see it a bit clearer. So you can see all the code before that's inside the end loop. Now, what, we want to keep doing this until sum, when, when sum equals to 21 exactly, then we want to stop. So while our sum is not equal to 21, we don't mind if we're going above it, but while it's not a 21, do this calculation. So it's not a 21, do the calculation. If it equals to 21, great, then it'll stop that loop. It'll stop everything. So it'll repeat doing this until one of the calculations equals to 21 exactly so let's have a look at that layout by just putting all of that in a outer loop boom well first, that's convenient our first one equals 21 exactly but if i click on it the second time boom ah there we go so i did one i got to 22 did another one 23 23 27 25 24 23 25 26 ah and that one we finally got to one calculation that got to 21 exactly and then it stopped repeating that loop it stopped that loop there the outer loop stopped because we got one value that equals 21 exactly and there doesn't seem to be much modification that we need to do here to make them work together they already are working together i think with that little part there so there we go so there we go that's how we did it one thing to take note of when you are doing these type of loops especially with the grids especially if you're using a rich edit you might want to control what the layout is of the grid pattern for example so this layout so how, what the gaps are between them if you want to control that you might once you've cleared it you will need to set the paragraph tabs so to do that i'm just going to do a couple we're going to say the rich edit dot paragraph dot tab count and you will then set how many tabs you want let's say i want to put four i know we need more than four but i'm going to set four and then for each of those tabs you're going to say rich data dot paragraph dot tab and then in square bracket the first one is a zero and you're going to set it to a particular value so let's set that one to 100 and then we're going to do that exact same thing again and i'll just copy and paste it a couple of times because we've got four tabs so the first one zero the second one will be one the second one third one will be three two and three there we go and i'm going to set this one to 120 140 160 so there's a big gap from the first text to the first tab and then after that there are smaller gaps so let's just see what that looks like and if i run it boom and display it ah oh, there you can see there's a big gap between the first value and the first tab and then there's these little gaps you can see there as we go for the next little ones there so that's how you can set your tabs you can play around with those numbers just remember to set this after you've cleared it otherwise it might reset your tabs so there we go so that's what i would suggest you do when you are displaying in a grid and you want to actually get the lines and the, the grids in the format that you want okay so there we go that's displaying data in a grid for more videos on RT and loops and all that stuff, go to our YouTube channel, click on the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And please support us by sharing us with your friends. Even follow us on TikTok because some funny stuff there too. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.